Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. You guessed it, the Duff Dog and I are back working on the ramp truck. So last time we tried to drive this thing, before today, we tried to drive it from the old shop to the new shop, because we got a new shop. It's got a lot of road noise. We're trying this microphone thing out. I'm real excited to be wearing it. Kind of like a dog wearing a cone. But it would not shift out of first gear. I don't know if I checked the transmission fluid. We know there's some leaks. I got some parts to repair what I think is leaking on the transmission, which is the speedo gear output area. I got a new fuel tank for this thing so we can get rid of the boat tank that's on it. I got some new lug nuts. We got some taillights to put on it. I don't know if we'll get to that because I'm not really excited about the taillights that we got off the Amazonia. And I'm sure we'll find some other things along the way, but the last thing that I found was I was just trying to limp it around the yard and in here was that we're not getting enough fuel coming out of the line, both with our new mechanical pump and a new electric pump, which Somehow the old one that was on there that was not old, probably has five or 10 miles on it, somehow that went bad. So we got a different one on there. So I don't know if the line's plugged or if we got a flat lobe on the camshaft so it's not allowing the fuel pump to open enough to bypass fuel through the, whatever it is, the diaphragm that the uh, fuel pump action has going on. But we gotta figure out some fuel issues. We gotta put a new brake line going to the back. We got some parts, so let's get after it. First thing we're gonna do is stick a new fuel tank and sending unit in it, cause that's the biggest box we got laying around here that's taking up a bunch of space. So let's get that in there. As you can tell, this box has been around the shop for a while. Those white rings are from painting the wheels for the uh, 1988 Chevrolet Suburban, two of which are still rolling around here with tires because we haven't modified them to fit yet. So we're gonna get that open. I think this came from eBay, LMC. Nope, LMC. These things have gone up in price. I remember when they were like 100 bucks, 150 bucks. Now they're significantly higher. We got a new sending unit because you know, they're like 30, 40 bucks. Might as well put one in while we're at it. So let's get the uh, 88 to 94 seat tipped ahead and get that in there. And then we can put her on the hoist and get her up in the air and blow out the fuel line. And hopefully we don't have any issues in there and have to not have to run a new fuel line. And then we can do the brake line when it's in the air and the lug nuts, all that good stuff. Transmission leak. So we got a lot of work for the hoist. That's why I've been waiting so long because we knew that we were going to get this new shop and this new hoist. So that's a delay. Enough yakking. I get about three comments a week that I talk too much. So uh, let's to work. First thing we're gonna do here, open the door. Guess what happens when you open a door? This critter comes running. And then we gotta figure out if we can get this thing out of there without pulling the seat out. You gonna slide that thing ahead for me, pal? Oh yeah, no thumbs. Let me get that for you. Duff, if you could slide the other side ahead, that would be appreciated. Oh, got her. I don't remember how these work. There's three bolts across the top. We got a couple of lines for the uh, return and for the fuel tank or whatever, pressure and return. We got a single wire for the gauge. There should be a ground wire somewhere, or maybe it's just grounded to the body. I guess I don't see a tab for the ground wire, but I feel like there should be one of those. Pop our rubber grommet out of here so we can fit that over our neck, you know, the dried up rubber. Probably should have got a new one of those. Probably should have got a cap because we don't have one. And I think there's some bolts on the bottom too. Yep. So I think those are a 3 ace bolt. Maybe they're 5 16 They look 3 ace ish to me, but... Oh, there's one over on that side. Okay, let's do it to it. And this is what we're gonna try to get rid of, the multiple fuel tanks, get my ratchet strap back, get at least one good fuel pump back, and maybe another one. And uh, Dave's not here, man, battery. Also, battery sponsor this week is Hot Wheels, or Wheels, I think he goes by. This battery got thrown in this thing when we were driving it around back in the day, and I don't think I gave him a shout out, but shout out to Wheels for sponsoring the battery this week, even though it was several weeks ago. Oh, you know that this is your door, huh? Ah, 
<sighs> I've got about three fuel tanks now that have been damaged in shipping. See the paint's flaking off there? This whole neck was banged and pushed in pretty good. Not a big deal, but when you spend a couple hundred bucks on something, plus probably another 50 bucks to ship it. But I waited too long to open it up, so I'm sure I can't go back to a long motor company and tell them that it's hosed up. I just wish they could figure out a better way to package these things. I just can't figure it out. Anyway, it's not the end of the world. We should still be able to straighten it out a bit, but, and maybe it'll fit in just fine. I don't know. We're gonna find out, but I'm not real freaking excited about it. I should know better when I buy fuel tanks. I just open them up in front of the delivery guy and say, send her back. The other problem is, I don't know if this one's a California one or not, emissions tank, but I think that was the only one I could get. This is not a California emissions pickup. That's the way she goes. All right, I'm gonna stick that sending unit in and I think we're just gonna try to slide it in, see how it goes before I try prying on that because I don't want to screw it up any worse than it already is. And once I start doing that, then LMC is really not going to help me out. Here's our sending unit. Comes with a new ring and a seal, which the tank also comes with. So I've got an abundance of these laying around because you don't throw nothing away around here unless you need it. And then we throw it away because we're idiots. Fishy that in there. Cram that into place. Does the seal go on the back side? Duh. So now we take that all back out and slip the seal over it. Yeah, that's gonna be more gooder. We'll give her a little tap, tap, tap roo with a chisel and a hammer. Just tap it in. Just tap it in. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a roo. Gotta rotate that collar around until it hits the stops. I like to hit on all four of those tabs, kind of move it around. You're hitting one, it seems like it wants to drive sideways, so just kind of work your way around. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Those lines look like they're facing the wrong direction, but it wouldn't surprise me. More bad parts. I think we're ready to try sliding in. See if we can't get that neck to sneak through there. Let's see how this goes. Well, what do you figure? We gotta go back that way yet, and we're already hitting the top of the hole for the neck, and we're a full hole off yet. So, we're gonna have to try to figure out a way to straighten that thing out. I wonder if we can find a pipe to slide over it. If I put a pipe inside it, I'm worried about screwing up where the gas cap blocks, interface threads, if you will. So I don't wanna do that because then we won't be able to have a fuel cap and then it'll be like my 71 Ford. If we pried in that area, it wouldn't be so bad. We'll see what we can come up with. Hopefully I can find a chunk of pipe that fits over that. Wish me luck. Looks like we're gonna be looking for something that's about two and a half, two and three eighths ID. I don't know what we got for that. Don't ask me what I saved this from, but it is the perfect ID. Get on your bad motor scooter and ride. I wish we had somebody to hold down that other side while I pried over here. Oh, seems like it went a little bit. Ah. All right, let's get some bolts in it if we can, and then see what happens. If we get some bolts in it, then we can twist on it a little bit more. Screw up our nice new paint. We have the top ones snugged up. Gotta put the bottom ones in yet. Of course, that's probably gonna come back to bite us, but you can see it's still at the top of the hole here. So let's see if we can work her down a hair. We can get my fat thumb in there and can't get her pinky in at the top even. So we're gonna do some persuading. We got a persuader right there. Oh man, I am good. Look at that fit and finish. Barely to the top of my nail. The whole way around. Oh yeah. 
freaking expert. Paint stick body gaps right there. Now we're gonna see if we can't get that old hard rubber back in place. I'm sure some soapy water would help in this process, but we ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. This thing is uh, a lot more supple than I expected. Got a non-marring plastic pry bar here. We don't want to scuff up our Butermus 50 one-year-old paint. No, 50, this is a 72, ain't it? Always make sure your persuader is nice and dirty inside so you get all that rust inside your new fuel tank. I think we got it. Looking back, it's a thinner lip out here, depth wise. And that's the way it slid out. It stayed on the neck of the old tank. So I feel like put it on that neck of the new tank and slitter through and then work that lip out. I don't know, it went. I would not want to have to do that on a freshly painted uh, cab, but if you were to do that, you probably would have moved the fuel tank, or you would have a new rubber, which would work with you a little bit easier. Okay, I'm sweating profusely, but I need a sandwich. Let's go look for a fuel cap, too. Oh, wait, that's set the old shop and the fuel cap collection. Son of a biscuit. Just a quick little update. Uh, I got back from Iola, pick up this sweet fender. Looks like it's the same color. It's off a 68 Chevy, which 68 to 72 GMC and 68 Chevy are the same. 69 to 72 Chevy do not fit a GMC. 67 Chevy and 67 GMC are the same. And then 68s are all the same. But 68 Chevy Fender is the only thing that will fit a 69 to 72 GMC. I think we did all right on colors, huh, Duff? Hopefully we can cover up that white part mostly. But look at this. Had her outside, well, so Mojo could use the hoist while I was gone. Came around the corner a little hot, and we uh, dumped our fuel tank off the side. Whoopsies, sorry Greta. So another reason we need to get this situation resolved. Also, this one isn't self-venting the old Atwood like this one is, so she swelled up a little bit in the heat. We gotta get that resolved, don't we, Duffel up, I guess. Yeah, gonna get uh, rid of these tanks. Get that one working behind the seat. Okay, vacation's over, I'm back to work. All right, we got this son of a biscuit up in the air. Pretty sure this might be the first time this thing's ever been on a lift. Cause we didn't have a lift at the big shop back when this thing was still running, so. Looks like that oil filter might be leaking. Rear main seal might be leaking. But this transmission speedometer is definitely leaking. You know how I know? Because there's a huge puddle on the floor. So we're gonna address that. But first we're gonna take this rubber line off that was going up to the auxiliary boat tank deal. And we're gonna blow that out. And then these are the two lines coming from that interior tank. You can see that was cut off or bypassed or pinched off or something. So we're gonna have to put a new chunk of rubber on both the pressure and the return, or the feed and the return. And I think while we're at it, there was this valve that they use to toggle between the tank behind the seat and the tank out back. I think we'll get rid of that just for, you know, weight savings, cost reduction, cost reduction, weight reduction, you know, so we can haul more on the back. And while I get that unhooked, I'm gonna unhook it up here and we're gonna blow that line out because it seems like she's a little, well, plugged up, a little too much cholesterol in the old big block, and we can't have any restrictions. We need all the horsepower we can get out of the old red dragon here. Took the restrictor plate off, give the red dragon a little more juice, but uh, let's keep that on the down low. It's not exactly street legal. So I'm gonna strip all this stuff down back here, unhook it up front, and we're gonna blow some air through it, see what happens.
So we got all our rubber hoses off of our steel lines. Now I'm gonna take and blow air through them steel lines and see what kind of sludge comes out. I know the one coming down from the tank was pretty tar -y. But I don't know which way to blow it. I'm gonna blow this end back and that end down. I don't know why, because gravity, maybe? Hopefully they just blow right through, otherwise we're gonna have to get some brake cleaner and wire and replace lines. And we don't wanna do that, because ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So here we go. Just kidding, can't get in there. Also, just kidding, I'm gonna leave you on this end so you can see what kind of sludge comes out. You tell me, just tell. Ernest P. Whirl. That guy, he'll tell us what comes out. I'm betting he's gonna say, Ew. It's gonna come out right there is our feed, and right there is the return. <laughs> Anything good come out? It sure stinks. And it seems like when I blew on the return, it was blowing out back here, so. What if that one ain't rusted through? Like, look at the sludge just coming off. It's like freaking nicotine tar coming off that pressure. Okay, uh, yeah, we're gonna definitely blow from the top down on that one because gravity's gonna wanna push it down here, right? Sure. Tell you what, we're gonna blow that one out too. The return line must have a hole in it because I can see air blowing out back behind that engine mount. So we're just gonna forget about that return. That's emissions related. Sorry, Greta. How dare you? So I'm gonna go up top, crack this at the carburetor, spray some brake cleaner and some air, see if we can't get that blown out as well. Well, we got everything blown out of there. Let's hook up that steel line, and then we just gotta go in the cab and wrap it up. The fun part about these is getting fuel running on your armpit when you're putting them on. You gotta tie a rag around your arm. That's the trick. That's what the internet says anyway. I have yet to do it. It feels kind of cool and refreshing on your armpit. It's like menthol. What are you doing, Goof? We gotta get some fuel in it before we go for a ride. We wanna see how it's done. Well, the one side is 3 eighths. That's your feed. The other side is quarter inch. That's your return. And the return really isn't doing anything other than being a vent up here. I don't know if the cap's vented, we should be good, but that's basically all we're hooking it up. And I don't think these clamps I got are big enough. Maybe. Maybe I'll move this barely slide over. There we go. Get these hooked up. Hopefully put some fuel in it. I want to have this fuel tank replacement wrapped. Maybe. Sweet. Now you can Seat, have the seat all yours. Oh, we should probably put those bolts in the bottom. Son of a biscuit. We got about them. Let's see if we can't thread those in first. Then the seat's all yours, pal. We might want to slide out of there though, because I gotta slide the seat ahead. Seat's all yours, Duff. I'll even slide it back for you. Hopefully we don't have any leaks. Let's 
Fill this son of a biscuit up. Don't be a wank. Fill your tank. Right, old car guy? Well, Junior was right. It's amazing what five gallons of gas will do for you. Not much. It ain't got no gas in it. I wonder what he's up to these days. Probably working on some big boat of a Mopar with a 440. Or a Yugo. Or a square body. Or a Mopar with rich Corinthian leather. Get yourself one of these non-fuel approved jugs. And then get the little bendy neck, unbendy, fixed bendy, 90 degree, and the link in the description down below. But you can only use them for non-fuel related stuff, like non-potable water. The only problem is they're freaking heavy. Okay, watch how fast I can pour it. Look at how fast that thing pours. These things are good. They cause cancer in California though, so you guys can't have them there. Ran over to the old shop the other day. We got ourselves a Motorrad MGC-704, made in Israel. I didn't know uh, there was a lot of manufacturing going on over there. Usually keep these things on hand. It seems like they're always missing. Or if you got a nice pickup, there's nothing I hate worse than a crappy old fuel cap. Or you just don't have one like the uh, Orange Ford. Okay. New fuel cap. Let's go prime the carbonator and bump this thing over and see if the fuel pump's doing its thing, the lines are doing its thing. Hopefully the fuel tank is doing its thing and not leaking all over along with my connections. And then we can not have the whole boat tank and fuel pump and you know, we can have 16 or 20 gallons of capacity as opposed to like five or six, whatever those little tanks are. I don't know. It's just more convenient. And I gain back my boat tank. So here's the silly thing. I use my hot sauce to burn some cardboard because that's what you do when you live in the country, apparently. And I was going to save some fuel out of that jug to prime the carbonator. And now we're out of fuel to prime the carbonator. So I'm going to have to go resolve that. Yay. I'll be back. Went to the fuel shed, restocked our hot sauce supply. Some gracious viewer sent us these bottles. And then he also sent us these labels, which is pretty freaking awesome for the old hot sauce. They're a little bit bigger than I care for, a little girthy, but the problem is they don't come with a condom, so I had to dig through my, my used condom stash, and we got that little guy there. You always want to keep a condom on your hot sauce bottle so that you don't burn the shot down from fumes, and you don't have to inhale the fumes, and then your gas probably doesn't evaporate. I don't know. It's just a good idea. Probably not such a bad idea when you know when you got taco sauce in there, but hot sauce you gotta watch out. On. Let's fill this thing up and hopefully our fuel system works. Well that's draining, I'm gonna hook up our battery cable. There we go. She's running out the accelerator pump, so she should be full. Looks like she's down a little ways on coolant, so we're gonna spill some of that all over too while we're at it. All right, let's see if this fuel system works on its own. Pretty good chance it doesn't because the lines are full of crap or the lobe is worn off the camshaft or the carburetor is just trash. I don't know, but when I was trying to move this thing up here the first time with the electric pump hooked up, it was just barely trickling out the uh, line. So there was clearly some restriction in the line and plumbing between the electric pump and the carburetor because that's where I unhooked it. So hopefully blowing all that stuff out resolved that and it didn't screw anything up in the process, which it probably did.
Well, just like when I brought it in, we're running out of fuel. So let's crack it up here and see what's happening and work our way back. The carburetor needs a dressing. Hopefully Chin comes through with something for us there. Yeah, there's a small kink in this line because somebody didn't use two wrenches at one point. But I'm sure it was running just fine with that for the last several decades of it being in use. So we'll see what happens. Let's uh, unhook that here and see what kind of gas shootage we got going on. Two wrenches and a line wrench. Every time, kids. Arr. All kinds of fuel pressure. Bet that filter's plugged up. Maybe. That would make sense. Because when we fill the carburetor, it runs fine. But it won't fill through the filter? I mean, as much crap as we saw on the lines, it's entirely plausible. And I don't believe we've ever changed this filter. I usually don't do preventative maintenance on fuel filters, especially ones in carburetors. I wait till they plug up. So, let's see how it looks. And then we gotta see if we can figure out where said filter would be in our collection of filters from the move. We don't really have those organized yet. But they definitely seemed like there was enough fuel up there. One inch, that's what size you need for these. It's a big son of a biscuit. Should I check this one? I had the line off to blow it out, huh? Yeah, hindsight. All right, let's show you fuel filtration. A quadra bog. Oh, there goes Callie honking her horn when she drives by. So there's a seal here. That's what seals this fitting to the body of the carburetor. And then you get this little filter that slides in. And yeah, it's it's pretty chewy. So go see if I can find a new one of these. And we'll go from there. You gotta make sure you put them in the right way. If you put it in that way, <laughs> bad things happen. Actually, nothing happens as far as making it run. So, I'm gonna go dig one of these out, hopefully. Well, looky what I found. i a new one. Same length, same girth. She's a GF 470. Don't ask me what brand that is. It's in a box mixed with a bunch of other crap. Let's put this son of a biscuit in there. They also made these, these are paper style. They made a sintered metal or a sintered bronze or bronze type ones. So make sure you put it in the right way. But it's, it's not one of those, so we're not putting that style in. And there's no thread sealant that goes on here. It's that seal on the back side that I showed you, that little plastic Sealy Mobopper dealio. And you don't gotta crank on these too much. That's how the threads get stripped out, and that's when your quadra bog is garbage. I think they make kits to rethread these, or there's companies that do it, but either way, those are like half the price of a new carburetor, so you don't want to do that. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Not a lot of pressure in there, so they ain't got to be super tight. All right, this better freaking fix it. We had all kinds of fuel up here when I cracked that line, plenty of pressure. I think that's why it would restart, is because there's enough pressure there that it would slowly trickle by that filter, but it wasn't enough that it would keep it running. So don't ask me how it worked so well on our last test drive. Top her off with a fresh load of the sauce. Whoa, 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 that's plenty.
Well, I think our filter fixed the issue there. Let's turn the idle up a bit. On the floor and a haul over the cross member it's not real hard to figure out that the leak is coming from that speedometer so we're gonna pull that thing apart and see if we can't seal it up here we go something kicked down ah, maybe probably I'm guessing we need another wire for this kick down to work and that scotch clip right there isn't real promising it's a two-pin connector Maybe that's the backup lights. Pretty sure it's kicked down. Not a Turbo 400 expert. Anywho, back at it. First thing we're gonna do is unhook the speedo cable, and then there's a clamp behind it, and the whole thing should just slide out. There should be a gear on the back side. Now, without screwing up these threads, I'm gonna carefully pry this, pull this, slide this, slip this speedo assembly out. I'm guessing there's oil back there? Oh, yeah. We, we got a catch pan, don't worry Greta. So you got this seal around the outside, and then there's a seal in the middle there. So we got a kit to rebuild these. Let's see how it goes. So here it is, Turbo 400 Speedo Seal Kit, as labeled by some dummy. Looks like my handwriting. So, looks like we got that Big O-ring that goes around the perimeter right about there. I'm guessing this snap ring holds that seal in right there. And that's the seal right there. I'm going to clean the schmoo off of this quick. And then we'll, we'll show you how to do it properly. I've never done one before, so we're just, we're just kind of winging it here, kids. Seems pretty easy though, right? Even we can screw it up. So easy, even a caveman could do it. A caveman could do it. <laughs> what? Oh, no, I, not cool. I, so we got the housing cleaned up. I'll give you a little tutorial here. Where's my pointer at? There we go, got it. So it's got these numbers, 36, 37, 38, 39. That's how many teeth of gear you can put in there. So you can put a 36 to a 37, 38, 39. You gotta have a different housing when you get to larger, 40 and larger. Case in point, this guy, it's in the package that we're not gonna take out and show you. Just kidding, we will. Break the seal. So, these housings are reasonably affordable. So I thought if this doesn't seal up, I'm gonna have one of those here. So we're not waiting for parts. So then the seal kit was like six bucks and these housings were like 20. Alright, All right. so this one does. 40, 41, 42, and 43 tooth. So that's what changes your, you know, your ratios in your rear end, your sizes of tires. And I don't know which is which. You know, if you got probably, you know, 410s, 456s, you need these teeth. And if you got 308s, 342, 373s, you need that 41 tooth or something. I don't know. But how I got to this point was this is our original gear, which is a 39 tooth. You can tell because I scratched it in there after I counted. I had this one laying around. She's a little Chewbacca. And that one had this red, the gears, they go by colors. That's supposed to tell you how many teeth they got. And this is a, did I not scratch it in there? Oh, cripes. I think I counted 34 on there. Well, it wouldn't be 34. It's, I don't know, 39, this is close. So I think you could slide it in here, but how I got to this point was this thing, is, it's just galled the snot right here where this, where this seal rides. So I feel like that's where it was leaking. So I think we need a new gear. And unfortunately, I didn't buy one of those because I'm not smart enough. So we're gonna see if this gear 
will fit in there. Our speedometer is going to be a little bit different. Less teeth means we're probably going to be, our speedometer is going to be off and it's going to be going faster than we're actually going, but who knows how close this actually was because we got probably different sized tires than the original. There goes Callie again honking her horn. Freaking kids. Uh, we're going to pop these seals out, put new ones in, and we're going to swap this speedo gear for now. And hopefully that fixes it. And if the speedometer is off, then we'll order a new 39 tooth. This is why I have a bunch of crappy old parts on hand is for silly instances like this. So let's see how this goes. I don't even see a snap ring in there. So we're just going to dig around in there, see what happens. There. That was easy. That was easy. I'm gonna blow that out a little more. I guess that's our old seal. Let's put our new one in there. Straight, hopefully. Easy. Gosh, go in there straight for cripe's sake. I don't know what this O ring does or snap ring. Is that supposed to go in there? Seems like it would. I think so. We'll get her started. Let's see if we can find a socket to slide in there. All right, got a 516 socket. Let's see if we can just push that in there. I think that's just to hold that seal in place. Just basically a little tension on it so it can't slide out of there. And we're going to put our 30, who knows, however many teeth on there. Red, I'm sure Chin can look it up on the internet. And I feel, you know, like a ring gear and pinion, you can't put a 373 ring with a 411 pinion, bad things will happen. But I think on these, there's, there's some leniency on them. Otherwise, that other gear that is on the transmission, I think you have to change that at a certain point. Then you gotta pull the tail housing out. I, I really don't know. I'm just lucky if a speedometer works, much less is correct. So we never get to that point. Okay, now we just put her back together, I guess. That seal is real loose on there. Oh well. We'll put some Wiener Schleider on there. It'll go in better that way, right? Sure. What are we, the transmission gurus now? This is like a second time in a couple of weeks. And the Metro from last week had transmission issues. We should rip into a manual sometime. That'll be fun. I do read every one of your comments, every single one, believe it or not. And a bunch of people are like, you can't use that white lithium or assembly grease on a transmission if bad things happen to the clutches or something. The world comes to an end. Or some crazy people take over the world. You gotta use petroleum jelly. And Mojo was saying, yeah, your grandpa, he used to work with my grandpa. And he said, your grandpa, he was always using Vaseline to put everything together. So I went and bought some Vaseline just for Mojo and grandpa because that's the way they did it in the old country. All right, it's 100% pure. It's the good stuff. We're sticking this together now. Enough rambling. Back to work. Give her a quick wipe. We don't get any grime in there. Hopefully our seal doesn't tear. You know, because we're all about cleanliness around this freaking dump. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but there's the other gear that spins it. That's right on the main shaft, out shaft, output shaft of the transfusion. And I think you gotta have this clocked right so that our Huango Tango pronger dealio retainer catches on it. So I'm gonna make sure we got it facing the right way before I slide it all the way in. Okay, so looks like we gotta have her about like yay. Yep, right about there. So you can read all the numbers, that would make sense. So you can look at this before you pull it apart. Ugh, ATF running down my arm. Dag nab it. I'm gonna give that a little baparooski with a hammer. Probably the wrong thing to do, but I don't think you wanna be, that little tab is pretty chintzy, so you don't wanna be prying. Hit in with that, it'll just er, wango tango right out on you. Probably not a good idea. Sounds like she bottomed out, perfect. Now we just hook our speedo cable up, and that should resolve our issue, provided our gear ratio is correct. Is there a speedometer cable wrench, or does everybody just use a 
suppliers like me. Snap on probably makes some $120 unit. Boy, if we had just a little more real estate to work here, that would have been nice. Oh, didn't even land it in the pan. Well done. All right. She's been cranked on a few times. So somebody clearly has either changed gears or tried to burn that leak by cranking on that. All right, I think we're done there. We're gonna hose that down a bit so we can tell it's a new leak and move on to something else. Well, since we're on the subject of gear ratios, I'm gonna crack myself a Point Lakeside. Pick these up in Stevens Point over there, Point Brewery. I always was told this thing had some crazy rear differential ratio, like 342s, which is like unheard of for one ton. Pretty much everything was 410s, 456s, maybe some 373s. So we're gonna figure out for sure what exactly they got. We're gonna debunk that myth, if it is a myth. And it would probably be good to drain this thing because who knows when the last time it was. I think these are a HO72 differential. HO52 is a single rear wheel like the 66K20 has. HO72 is the one ton dually version. Okay, let's crack her open. Speaking of cracking something open. Oh, it's so good. What's it in your lips? It's so good. Oh yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, that water that came out of there, that ain't good. The sludge doesn't look much better either. Ooh. That's not the good dinosaur juice. Ew. Ew. Well, hopefully those oddball gears are in good shape. Good news is the water just sat at the bottom. That's right where I wanted that washer to go. Oh, that's some good stuff. Good news is the gears don't look all pitted up. That myth is officially debunked. 41 teeth, 10 teeth, 41 divided by 10, four tens. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. So, I guess we'll be on the lookouts for some 373s or something. Or an overdrive. That way we can keep the RPMs down and not spend so much on gas. Which is like four and a half bucks around here now. I think the highest we saw was, was like 490, 480 on the way to Iowa. She's coming down though. Inflation's not a real thing. Okay, I'm gonna let this drain out. I'm gonna go make some supper, respond to all your comments, cause it's Monday today. And get back at this tomorrow. Hopefully this sludge just drains itself out overnight. That'd be great. Sandwich time. One more thing before we call it a night. You can see how pitted those teeth are. From sitting in the fricking water for years. So. The good news is, it's not like we wasted some uber rare ring and pinion by letting it sit out and get pitted up, but yeah, that's gonna, she's gonna howl a bit, sound like a den of hungry lions. But what can you do? It is what it is. Look at that majestic beast out there just hanging out, protecting his new domain. All right, Duff, you ready to go make some brats for supper? Yeah, sounds good to me too. Maybe have some sandwiches and a milk bone. Look at him just flopping around out there. What a goon. Okay, back at it. Let's go reply to some comments. It's such a sip. That better not be poop you're rolling in. We left this diffy drain for a couple days. We're gonna dig through it and try to get all the sludge out of the bottom. And then we're gonna seal her back up, fill her back up. And uh, hopefully it's it's Fine, I'm sure it's just fine. Hopefully there's no big metal chunks under here. Whoa. Ooh, that smell. Skinner, right? Yeah. 
8090. Blech. If only they made some type of vacuum pump to just suck this sludge out of there, huh? I'm sure they do for more than this truck is worth. Oh, there's our first chunk. What's that? Be a magnet. Sure looks like a magnet. Doesn't do magnet things though. Well, what do you suppose that was for? Go give her a little spritz with the brake cleaner and call her good. That's pretty dumb. She left my gloves on it. Shell these oily rags out of the oil pan, huh? Well, if that's the dumbest thing we do today, we're doing all right. We got our Amazon box placed in our drain pan to try to catch all the gasket material we scrape off with our SS1 super scraper, the best dang scrapers they make. Oh yeah, look at that. Just chews it up. Never mind that about 95% of it is not going into the box. Not the super scraper's fault. Now we just gotta clean up the diffy cover, right stuff it up. We're ready to put 8090 back in there. New goodness. We got our right stuff. Black one minute gasket maker. The best freaking stuff out there. If you ask me, but what do I know? We're gonna schmooze some of this on there and whammy your back on. It's never gonna leak or come off again. Hopefully. Good enough for the girls we go with. Always make sure to have a little dabaroo sticking out there so that you don't dry up your right stuff. Now let's spill our hardware all over the floor. The rusty side goes up. This is the first time I've ever used a wrench on these. I'm usually a Swedish nut lathe type of guy, but this thing is tight. Oh my gosh. We have to go to a pipe wrench or what? Oh, there's just no good way to. Oh, pipe wrench it is. There's just too much of a radius on here. I can't get a good bite. Hopefully we can grab the edge. Probably not. We should have taken this off when we had the cover up off the vehicle, eh? Yeah. Well, we're not very smart. I'm not a smart man. There we go. Yeah, fall right in the pan. Perfect. Great, grand, wonderful. Good, great, grand, wonderful. Okay, let's fill her up. Now that we got the diff filled back up, let's replace this rear brake line. As you remember, it had a hole in it, so we pinched it off. I could have just made a new line before, but it's a quarter inch brake line instead of the normal 3 16 that we deal with and everything else. So I had to wait to get some quarter inch line and some fittings. We got all that stuff now, I think. Had it around for a while, but let's pop that son of a biscuit off and get some rear brakes, because if we're gonna haul anything, we're gonna need all the brakes, you know, to slow this big block down and such. All right, let's get after it. Here's what we pulled out of there, about 12 frickin' feet of quarter inch line. There was one splice, this goes back to the diff. And then this one went up to the front cross member where there's another splice. We're just gonna put this all in one piece now. Does anybody know why they wrap this in this like spring steel stuff? I don't know. It's really hard to get a wrench over that spring steel and get it onto there. I'm sure it's for stress or for rock chips or something like that, some type of protection. Always protect your brake line. Anyway, we're not putting that stuff on. 
So we're gonna get some new stuff and put it on there, fish it through there. There's about a half dozen clamps. I was taking one of those off and I jarred where it was spliced and I got a whole bunch of that brake fluid in my face and in my mouth and tell you what, 8090 smells horrible, brake fluid tastes horrible. I don't know what's worse, brake fluid or coolant, but it's, it's on my lips and I can't get it off. It's terrible. Okay, I'm gonna go get all the brake stuff. Make a new brake line. Here's what we got. Some of this copper nickel stuff that everybody thinks is amazing. I've used it before. I guess it doesn't really excite me, but we got some this time. We're gonna try something new. We're gonna try drilling a hole the outside diameter of this through this two by four. Try pulling it through there to get her straight. Somebody, somebody gave us that tip and I think it was the F1 video. So we'll see how that works. Wish me luck. Look at it. Here goes nothing. It's a quarter inch hole. Yeah, that's. Maybe I should have drilled it smaller. I mean, it's kind of straightened it out, but. Maybe you need like a 4x4. Four four. Maybe I drilled the hole too big. Okay, not impressed. We're better off just doing her by hand. We tried. And part of the reason I don't like this stuff, it's so obnoxious. Don't get me wrong, I like the look of copper, but you got a rusty old pickup it just stands out. It's like a, it's like yellow spark plug wires. Oh, when we're putting that diff cover on, I was gonna tell you something else I really hate. Painted diff covers or chrome diff covers. Ugh, yuck. Especially when guys paint them like neon orange or neon green or neon pink. Neon diff covers, add that to the list of things that really grind my gears. You know what really grinds my gears? The list is getting pretty long. I'm gonna go take one of these nuts, see if they actually thread into our existing components on the ramp truck. That way we know that it's gonna work. Is my luck. I'll flare the end of this and then this won't fit on the pickup. And that would not be good. Well, it looks like it was the right size. Turns out there's a bunch of different sizes in here. Well, shoot. Better make sure we check whatever we put on there. Ford is notorious for using non standard fittings on the end, and that's really irritating. And there's some non standard fittings in here Ford things. Should be good to go. Yeah, sweet little line condom over that so we don't fill her full of grease. We're gonna just flip her through. Easier said than. This might be a record for length for us. Personal best. Slip our condom off here. We really need to do something about this transmission vacuum modulator. And we'll hook this up, and then we should be able to tidy everything up back there and flare the other end. That's what I like about these master cool flaring tools you can use them on the vehicle eastwood makes like a rotary one that you pull a lever on you got to use a vice and then just the regular old style ones where you only know, just got that strip and all the holes in it those i find you almost have to use a vice to get a good flare on it no need for that with the master cool okay tighten that up and well we don't even need to tighten it we'll leave it let it leak. Forget about it till later. Sound like a good idea? Brilliant! Brilliant! Got all the clamps in place up there. I'm gonna kind of fish this around where I think it needs to be. And we're gonna mark it, and cut it, and flare it, and bleed it, and be all done with brakes. Just kidding. I think there's a wheel cylinder we gotta replace yet. Maybe. Right about there. Ew. 
idiot. Guess what? Glad I left it long. I haven't done that for a while. All right, got some good practice there. I'm an idiot. Oh Christ, I did it again. All right, it's getting to be about time to call it a night here. See, you know, the superstars, they probably do this too, but they cut this part out. Not Duff and I over at Morski Repair. We show just how dumb we are. But if I learn from my mistakes, it should be one smart SOB. Here we go, third time's a charm. I think it's time for a sandwich. There. Turn that son of a gun up. And on to the next step. Mojo Man just took off for the day. Helped us bleed the brakes in this thing. So let's see if we can get this winch working. This thing is a worn, was it 86, 31, something like that. I guess they're pretty common. It seems like I hooked a battery up and tried it before, but let's, let's see if it just happened to fix itself. I don't know what we got going on. Looks like we got two, three battery cables in here. So this is clearly a ground because it's red and it's attached to the body. And this blue one goes up to the winch. And I'm guessing this other blue one comes from up front so that the pickup charges it. What do you think, Duff? I'm sure these connections are going to be super good. Let's give it a shot. Our winch battery sponsor this week is the amazing Florida Man. We're going to probably need some locking pliers to clamp those on there because they're pretty toasty toasty. I want you to do something. I'm doing that again. I burned. Mm, 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 mm. Toasty. So like I said, this one goes to the body. And this ugly son of a biscuit is going up to the winch. So let's hook them up. Let's get rid of this CV shaft. We don't, we don't need that guy where we're going. Yeah, we'll, just, we'll put it in there. We might need it for something. No sparks. That's good, I think. There should be a winch controller that goes in there. And we didn't find one of those. So we're just gonna have to figure it out otherwise. I think a dime or a quarter would be a good switch to use in between those four pins there. Let's see if we got power at it. All of these cables look in super optimal condition. The sun has done zero damage to them as you can tell. Looks like it must ground through the body. And we got this power coming in down here. So let's pull this cover off. And See what we can find. Oh, look at all that amazingness. And we got three wires going into that four pin connector. And then we got, looks like just four Ford starter solenoids. I'm guessing what these solenoids do is just reverse the polarity. And there's a lot of dirty connections in there. We got our handy dandy power probe, not a paid sponsor. We should have power here coming from that cable. And we do, and that strap goes up to here, so we should have power here. And we do. So, in, where is it grounded? That sends power through there. Up to this guy when that's activated. What is this? This white is our constant power. Okay. And then when this solenoid triggers, it jumpers to this guy and this guy goes up to this guy. All right. So one of these should have power. Power right meow. Now what is so damn funny? There we go. 
All right, Let's see if I can explain what you got going on here. So on the back side of this, we got three wires. We got constant power to our white. This black one lights up this solenoid, and then this jumper wire lights up this solenoid. Green wire lights up this solenoid, and then there's a jumper wire goes up and lights up this solenoid. So I'm guessing what happens. So you got power coming in here, you light up this solenoid, and it sends power over to here, and then we light up this guy. There must be, that goes to that motor. I don't know, it's magic, it reverses it somehow. And then there's jumpers going from here to here, here to here, here to here, and here to here. We'd have Wes draw us up a circuit if he were here. It's pretty much electrical magic. Let's try sending some power to them and see what happens. <laughs> Typical Ford solenoids, they don't like being powered up. Oh boy! That's, that's out. So black is retract. So green should be... Well, how neat is that? How neat is that? So we just gotta clean up some connectors in here or what? What happens if I power it up from this end? So everything's good in here. We just need a connector. A connector, a controller. A worn winch controller, sweet. Hopefully I can go find some spare change and we can test this winch out with the spare change method. These connections are not good and will probably malfunction under a load. And standing right here, jumpering that, it's probably not a good place to be with this cable coming in here, waiting for it to break and the car to come smashing through the back window. And rumor has it this winch is way too fast for winching cars on, I guess. I don't know. First winch got stolen, so after they bolted this winch in place, they welded this bar on here so that it would be much more difficult for would-be thieves to steal this one, I guess. We'll put this cover back in place because why leave it loose? I'm sure we're gonna have to open it up again. But I think this is for, yep, neutral on the winch. Maybe, I don't know. There's a grease circ on this latching mechanism down here. We could probably grease that. We got ourselves a good old 2021 nickel. Who is even on a nickel? Is that Jefferson? I don't know. Kids these days. Monticello. E Plumus Unum United States. Whatever. Are these can't are they uh there we go. That's out. That's in. It's just that easy. Cool. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Which way was out? Not that way. All right. And our winch stuck tight. Let's go hook onto something. See what happens. I'm gonna keep this wooden nickel in my pocket because we're probably gonna need it. Think it's gonna start? Pull our new fuel system in there. All right, let's see what happens. Put it in park first. What's that? Pump it? Okay. Duff knows quadrajets. We gotta get some gauges working in this thing. Oil pressure works though. Oil pressure works though. Pegs are right to the mood. Seem okay. That's a plus. What do you think? Should we go try to haul something? Let's at least try to get it loaded. Go 
we'll see what we got out back that we can snatch up real easy like. Probably better uh, check that transmission fluid, huh? Yeah, let's go back to the shop and do that. Yeah, we drained it all out when we swapped that speedo gear thinger. Duh. Duff says, transmission fluid is full. Let's do this. Ready? Try number two to haul something. What are we gonna haul that we're not gonna screw up? Let's, let's hook on to big oily here. Let's see if we can send that thing through the roof, huh? How do you get so dirty, you goon? So now the hard part is, I don't know how long the ramps are. So we're just gonna wing it, get her halfway close, and go from there. Well, what are these held in by? Friction? Oh, they're heavy. Oh boy. One at a time. I thought this was free spool, but it's uh, not free spooling. Cause I'm free spooling. Oh my gosh, I can't sing. All right, let's uh, extend her out. I'm gonna use our Woodrow Wilson nickel here. Duff, if you could pull this out. Way too fast. What should we hook on to? I feel like that bumper is not a good idea. Straight around the axle, what do you think? All right, sounds good. I think it came with that rusty chain on the toolbox. Take the Bronco out of gear. It, it helped. battery that is. Well she's on there. I feel like to get more steer axle weight we want it sucked up to here and then it 
you know, doesn't have that play to go ahead. Although we are going to tie it back. Not really sure what we're going to tie to because nobody ever incorporated hooks back here. I sure hope they tied it backwards, not just forward, and relied on this. But you got hooks up here to hook to to tie it ahead, which, like I said, really it's not going to want to come ahead, especially you get it up to here. But let's get her sucked all the way up and then figure out how we're going to tie this thing down. And it's, it's tight. You can see that wheel is right on that edge. And that one, there ain't a whole lot of play, so the uh, margin for error, real slim. We need to get a better winch control. This thing is, it's way too fast, in my opinion. It needs to be about half as fast as it is. You don't want to be in a rush when you're winching a car on, in my experience. A little bit more. Come on, Florida man. You're so close. Just a little more. Want to show them how you tie down junk? So we still got the winch hooked up, which I hate relying on winches. So we got that chain over there with a binder going to this hook basically on the other side. So we got both the binder and the winch holding it. I guess if I was going to go a long ways, I'd like to run one on this side and go up to here. But, and then back here, I like to cross the pumpkin and go over. We get her hooked at the back here, which I don't really like that because, you know, if it were to come loose, it's going to, gravity is going to slide it that way. So we should probably put some C channel on the side here. And then you can drop the hook through that. I like that better. What do you think? We got to figure out something for, for lights. Never mind that stuff. But I think she's, uh, Good to go. Should we take her for a rip? See how she rides? She's on there, Duff. Slid her over a little ways. I know these Broncos are pretty narrow wheel track width, but I mean, it's right up against there and there's probably an inch on this side. So pretty limited margin for error. Let's get these ramps loaded up. Get her tied down. What do you think? How's it look under there? Ready to go for a rip. I feel like there needs to be some type of positive stop so that those ramps can't go shooting out. Although you would probably hear them coming out, one would think. But it sure sucks to get to your destination and not have your ramps. All right. Oh, door handle wasn't down. Well, first time hauling something on the back of a vehicle, I think. Or at least a car on the back of another car. See how this goes. It started, so that's a plus. Remember, we only got six gallons of gas, so we could probably make it about 12 miles. You can actually see with the mirrors. There goes nothing. Let's take her around the block. See how she tows. You can definitely feel it floats. The weight back there. We're actually using that suspension as opposed to being rough as a buckboard wagon, rough as a cob, and now it's not shifting out of first gear. Sweet! Why is it not shifting out of first? parked it is that governor was stuck so maybe we gotta play with that governor again we'll probably have to call transmission Corey and see what the deal is he's probably gonna tell me to just pin it to win it and it'll come out of it but it's definitely not coming out of it we got no tack we're doing 30 and first with four tens i feel like those are valves floating speaking of floating duff's ears really float this wind first.
Well, maybe now's a good time to put an overdrive in it, huh, Duff? Make some new drive shafts. Figure out our shift linkage. Perfect. Just what we needed is another money pit. Transmissions are our area of expertise, I guess. Like it or not. So, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it hauls good at uh, 20 mile an hour, but it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. Definitely gonna need a sandwich after this. I mean, hey, at least we got some junk on the back. We know the winch works. We just can't win. Duff's happy we got to go for a ride, though. This is optimal cruising speed. He doesn't get any bugs in his eyes this way. Oh, look, cows. The neighbors are all gonna think that we're just creeping around because we don't slide the corners like usual. second gear would just randomly go out on a turbo 400 comment down below I suppose we could take that silly uh, governator apart see if it's stuck put a different one in there Ooh, a donkey I didn't know the neighbors had a donkey Boys and girls, we got a load on the back of this 1972 GMC one ton ramp truck for the first time in, man, 1991-ish, so 92, 30 years since this thing has hauled a load, so that's pretty cool. We need to figure out why the transmission is now stuck in first gear. We need to get some taillights on it. We need to, you know, patch some holes in the floor so I don't get hit by rocks. We got a bunch of other stuff we gotta do. We gotta put a fender on it yet. We should get a controller for the winch. We should clean up all the connections going to said winch. We gotta figure out a way to tie down the ramps. We got plenty of stuff to do on this thing. So let us know down below if you know what A is wrong with that transmission. I think it's the governor. Hopefully it's just the governor. Again, the governor. And if you wanna see more of the ramp truck, seems like uh, ramp truck videos do okay. 
think it'd be pretty cool to get this thing on the road, ripping down the road. Maybe we just gotta go to a 4L ADE. Be cool to haul one on the back, put the trailer behind it so we can double down. Duff approves of riding in it, don't you pal? Anyway, sun's going down, it's getting late. It's the end of the week here, so uh, kind of running out of time. So thank you very much for watching. Give us a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. All that good stuff. Check out the other videos. Like, share, subscribe. Yada, yada, yada. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done as long as you're having fun. It's not a lot of fun when you go for a ride and your transmission doesn't come out of first gear. But, hey! We're just... This is, this is the life we live, driving old hot garbage. Because guess what other transmission? That one doesn't want to come out of second gear. That transmission works good. We just can't get the tires we want on the back.